Well, in the next question, question 2A part 1, the question talks about the dot cross diagrams for carbon monoxide. Now, you know carbon basic has four electrons in the outer shell and oxygen has six. So the best dot cross diagram you could come up with will actually satisfy the requirement for the oxygen. It needs two, so it takes a two electron for carbon to make it equal to eight. But obviously carbon is not fulfilling its octet, but not all molecules do, so there's nothing else to worry about. So this is the accepted dot cross diagram for carbon monoxide. Moving on to question two, it suggests why carbon monoxide is produced in addition to carbon dioxide in some internal combustion engine. Well, internal combustion engines, they use a lot of hydrocarbon as fuels, and which may may not burn properly. Now, if it doesn't burn properly, we're looking at some carbon monoxide being produced. This could happen because of lack of oxygen or could be even low temperature in the beginning stages of the running of internal combustion engine. So the reason why there would be some carbon monoxide present due to incomplete combustion of uh, fuels, hydrocarbon fuels, due to lack of oxygen or low temperature. Now let's have a look at the B part of the question number two. This question has given us the standard enthalpy of formation of carbon monoxide here as minus 111. So when you want to do a Hess law question as much, uh, basically you have to learn the skill of how to draw the Hess law cycle. So if I have to form carbon monoxide, so the arrow has to point towards the arrow points towards the substance which is being formed. Now to form carbon monoxide, I need carbon and I need oxygen. So you place them here. And according to the question, the enthalpy change for one mole of carbon monoxide formation is minus 111. But what we see here, two moles. So that's why minus 111 times 2. So that's the enthalpy change on the right hand side. The question then goes on and says the formation of carbon dioxide is minus 394. Carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide is here. Now, to form carbon dioxide, the enthalpy change is minus 394. So I'm going to write minus 394 here. But since I don't see, uh, I just see one mole here. I don't see two, three or any other number. So this remains as it is. There is no formation for carbon. Don't forget, it's an element. We don't talk about formation of elements because we only talk about formation enthalpies of compounds. We don't talk about, about elements. We can burn elements though, but we don't form the elements. Well, this is what the Hess law says. According to Hess law, the overall enthalpy change should be equal to a sum of this. This is your delta H1 and that's your delta H2. So this plus this. So if you solve it out, as you see here, the arrow directions are opposite. So I'm going to switch the sign. So it will become positive 394. And I have here minus 222. So why don't you go ahead and solve and let's see whether you match the answer with mine. Uh, you should be getting your final answer as positive 172 kilojoules per mole. So endothermic reaction. Now, when you look at the C part 1, there's an equation given. There's a complex there reacting with carbon monoxide. And that's the product there. The question goes on and says, describe the reaction, type of reaction that you see here. Now, if you look at this reaction, you should pay attention to what is the difference between the product and the reactant. You notice the reactant has two H2O molecules, then this one has only one. Also, you notice that one of carbon monoxide has come and taken the place here and one of the H2 has been replaced. Now in transition elements in, in that lesson you study the definition of ligands and ligands basically uh, they have uh, their lone paired donors to the central metal ions to form complexes. So in this reaction H2 is a ligand and it has been replaced by carbon monoxide another ligand and that's why it's a ligand exchange reaction, or you could say ligand substitution reaction. That's the answer for this first part. Now, C part 2 is one of the a very repeated question which comes in the examinations. This question asks students to explain the concept of why there would be color changes during ligand exchange reaction. This is a very, very common question and it's much advisable that you actually 
um, learn this question very very effectively now it could be any reaction any ligand exchange reaction the concept remains the same and the concept says whenever there's a ligand substitution what happens is as the ligands approach the transition metal ions there's a little bit of repulsion between the electrons of the ligand and the the electrons of the the metal ions the d orbital electrons and this is sometimes also called as a ligand field repulsion and because of this um, there is a split of energy that happens some kind of an energy gap which happens between the d orbitals in, in an octahedral complex you expect the dx squared minus y squared and dz squared these two orbitals to have a bit more energy compared to the dxy dyz and dxz now that difference of energy the energy gap depends on what kind of ligands got close to the tr uh, transition metal ions different ligands causes different energy gaps now if the energy gap happens to have um, an amount of energy it's almost in, in a visible range then it's quite possible for us to see the color changes so when light passes through the energy from light uh, which is equivalent to the delta e value the energy gap value is absorbed by the electrons in the lower um, d orbitals i'm talking of the dxy dyz and dzx and any of these electrons will jump from lower energy levels to high energy level and this causes absorption but this jump of electron can only happen if there is a gap in the high energy orbital and that's why the absorption happens and if that absorption happens the the white light which goes into the complex is not the same which comes out so it's minus the amount of radiation which has been absorbed and that's the reason why we get different colors depending on what has been absorbed so that's basically the explanation for why color exchanges happen so don't forget as the ligands change the energy gap changes and that's why the absorption changes and as the absorption changes we see the color also changes so uh, recommended answers would be highlighting all those essential points so i'm going to list them on the board make sure you copy them correctly so um, as I explained earlier, the whole concept of the d orbital split and the reasons why absorption happens in terms of color. So I have highlighted all the points that you should be making sure that it's written in your answers. So d orbital split is due to the ligand field. That's the repulsion between the electrons of the ligands and the, the electrons in the transition metal in, the, in their d orbitals. Um, and the, so what happens is there's some kind of an energy gap. Don't forget the energy gap is between the dx square minus y square and the dz square. They have a bit more high energy compared to the remaining three dxy, dxz and dyz. They are a bit at lower energy. And this, uh, so, so energy is absorbed whenever the electron jumps from the lower to higher energy level. But it, it cannot happen until unless there is a gap in the higher energy level. And that explains why copper one ion um, such an absorption cannot happen if you look at the electron distribution for copper one you find it has 3d10 so there is no gap in the higher energy level so uh, there is delta e there is energy gap but there is no way this absorption can happen but that's why absorption happens in copper two plus because if you notice the distribution it if you write out the distribution of copper two plus you'll find 3d9 and when you arrange the electrons using Hans rule you find that there is a vacancy at the top and that's the reason why electron can move from lower to higher causing the absorption and don't forget towards the end um, different ligands will cause different values in delta e different value of energy gap and that's responsible for difference in the absorption so that's the key essential things don't forget this is one of the most repeated questions in the exam so it's always good to uh, memorize them these are very good points for you to learn now let's have a look at the third question here. In this question we have the concentration of the complexes in three different experiments. Concentration of carbon monoxide and the, the value of rate of reaction for all the three experiments. Using this data you were supposed to find out order with respect to each reagent and write down the rate equation using that. Now, order with respect to each reagent well basically we are going to work with complex I just wrote complex here and carbon monoxide 
we're trying to find out how they affect the rate. Now if you look at all the three, you notice that the numbers are changing in all the three experiments. So that makes it a bit more difficult for you to work out which set of values you should solve, use to figure out the rate of reaction. I see here the co concentration of complexes increasing and I see it's decreasing here from if, you, if I take line 2 and line 3 the concentration of this is increasing but the concentration of this is decreasing and interestingly the rate is increasing so that's a bit curious so just to make sure what we what we can do is let's let's pick up line 2 and line 3 so as a thumb rule you should always divide the big number by the small number so I'm going to divide this by this so when I divide I'm trying to find out how the con the concentration of complex has changed how much it has increased so just divide this value by this value and when you work it out you should get um, 1.38 as your answer so the concentration increases by 1.38 don't forget you need to divide this value by that value please check and since you have done that come here and do the same for the rate big number by small number divide this by that and interestingly you will notice that the rate also has increased by 1.38 almost the same now that means the increase in concentration here and the amount it increases is exactly the same what happened to the rate which means that the decrease in the concentration of carbon monoxide has got no effect on the rate and that's how you figure out that it is zero order with respect to carbon monoxide and it is first order with respect to complex the reason why we say first order is whatever happened in complex whatever by how much ever amount the complex change same amount the rate change so that's basically how we figure out the first order and since CO has not affected the rate so that's why we say it's zero order once again, if you're wondering why CO is not affected, you see the concentration of CO has decreased, but even then the rate has gone up. So CO has done nothing. So don't forget the final answer, zero order with respect to carbon monoxide and first order with respect to complex. That's how we solve this question. Okay, now if you look at the fourth part here, uh, that's, that's the answer from the previous question. The, the question wanted us to write out the rate equation. And since we confirmed that the order with respect to complex was 1, so that's the rate equation, R equals to K. Um, I just put complex, you just make sure that you copy down the correct formula as it is. Now the question says, they've given you three mechanisms. If you read the question, the first mechanism, there is only one reaction, and that's the one which says it's a slow reaction. But notice carefully in the first equation, there are two reactants, the complex and the carbon monoxide. Now, if you look at your rate equation, you don't find the carbon monoxide there. And since it does not appear in the rate equation, so that mechanism cannot be the possible mechanism. So that's one is wrong. Um, let's have a look at the third mechanism. If you look at the third mechanism, um, look at the first reaction, the one which has been marked as slow reaction. Once again, the problem in that equation it has two reactants, the complex and the carbon monoxide are appearing in the slow reaction. But then, since I don't have carbon monoxide here, that means my third mechanism also is not correct. Now, if you look at carefully the second mechanism, it has given two equations. The first one is slow, the second one is fast. But if you look at the slow reaction, there's only one reactant, and that reactant is the complex. So it's agreeing with our rate law. So that's why mechanism two is the correct answer and the explanation you will write would be because it has the reactant which appears in the rate law that's that's the reason why so mechanism one and three cannot be your answers because it contains carbon monoxide which does not appear in your rate law so that's that's how you solve this question